When you talk about this uh, and we hear prayers from the Pope, it's like, how do we bring this to our children, if at all? What, you know, children will find out about this. We're watching television. We could be talking in the car and things like that. How do we approach our own kids uh, with this? Dr. Eric Fisher back with a psychologist. Uh, let's hit on that point first as people wrestle with this, because I'm sure it happened yesterday where mom or dad in the car, getting word, having a conversation with a friend and forgetting that maybe there are children in the back seat. You're exactly a great point. And even having TV sets on and thinking your kids are doing something else. Kids hear everything, whether we think it or not. And sometimes we think, well, our kids really weren't tuned in. But I know that, you know, I can, I can focus on many things at once. And a lot of times I was more interested in what was going on with my parents and what was going on with me sometimes, even though it looked like I was focused on something else. So kids absorb these things. We have to be aware that it's important, like I said, to feel what they know first before you fill them in with information. See their reactions. I think Mike had some great comments about looking at their, their sleep patterns and, and you know eating patterns are huge. What their play is like. I often watch kids play because I know their play and how they play is often representative of what they're feeling. So if you have your kids all of a sudden playing doctor and they're rescuing people and they're, and they're healing people with wounds and stuff like that, well, where'd you get that idea about mm -hmm. that? And even just play with your kids, play a game with your kids, play dolls with your kids. I play Barbie with my daughter even, you know, and stuff like that. Those things are important to, to, to be aware of watching where your kid's at and keeping in touch with them. Dr. Eric Fisher, we have a lot of questions. We're going to continue our coverage of the Connecticut school shooting. And we're talking with uh, Dr. Eric Fisher, psychologist, uh, just about children handling this, whether it be the children right there in Connecticut or our own as we watch this coverage uh, mm -hmm. unfold. And I know you want to hit on some things. I know that if we if we've gotten information, it comes into us uh, often in a case like this and drips and drabs. And someone had mentioned, I believe it was the brother of the shooter mentioned, my brother has a personality disorder. Autism was mentioned as well. And you want to make it clear autism has nothing to do with it's anything violent like violence. this. Exactly. There are a lot of families out there with, with children with autistic disorders. And the, the autistic spectrum is called a spectrum for a reason. There's a huge range of kids who have been diagnosed with autism. And actually in 2013, that diagnosal change, but that's not as important as the issue of making sure that we don't start to characterize kids as aut with autism as threats. And I think the way that sometimes the media can enunciate words and put emphasis on things is very important to pay attention to. I think we all have to be responsible. As information comes, it's just that information right now. So make sure that uh, as a person who may know somebody with autism, Keep letting your kids play with them. Yeah, Stay right. in touch with them. Don't start to look at them differently. Schools need to be aware of these things because, again, depending on who's hearing this stuff in the news and, and what they're watching and if they're misinformed, this could lead to some really difficult situation for kids who already have challenges. Is there ever a way to decipher who may turn violent in terms of we're thinking, what can we learn from this? How can we prevent this from happening again? Are there warning signs with kids who may be violent? It, it, there are some, definitely, but there are, in a lot of cases, here you have a kid who's just kept to himself. And how do you know the kid who's shy or the kids who's internalized with the kids who's tortured inside? You really can't tell, so you have to make sure that communication is key. Parents are going to lead the way in a lot of ways for communication with their kids, and if they're not understanding, to make sure that they're talking with professionals who can help them understand. Got it again. Dr. Eric Fisher, thanks so much for your insights. We're going to continue our coverage.